everyone welcome to today's episode so i am so excited today i have guests this is vivian and sam and they also have a youtube channel you can check them out you go by vivian sam mm -hmm. vivian sam i'm going to link it down in the description go check them out and uh, pretty much what we're doing today is talk about the uh, story how they met briefly and then also how vivian came here and transitioned and all these good things so yeah so welcome guys, welcome to my channel. Thank finally, you. let me actually scoot over. Thank you, ladies. So finally, I'm happy to have you guys on my channel. Thank I you. have actually hosted. Yeah, so I, I previously hosted same on my channel, but it was via Zoom or online. So now that we are in person, we decided why not just chat um, since we just met and I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, so we're just going to, so this is Vivian and that's Sam and this is Liz and this, this is, is somebody, Vivian. she's here. <laughs> so we are all excited. So if you have any questions, any concerns, you can also leave them in the comment section. So we're just going to begin by asking um, just how they met and also how the transition has been for Vivian. Yeah, especially. So briefly tell us, Luna, you're going to be quiet briefly tell us how did you two meet just briefly where mm -hmm. and then how was the process of you coming here was it easy quick um just say just briefly so then we can then go through how your life has been since you came here okay i'll start <laughs> well we met during my third year in peace corps so i was a peace corps volunteer in U northern Uganda mm -hmm. and Viv and I met in Gulu which is in the north mm -hmm. and we began dating towards the end of my third year and went into long distance and <laughs> went to get a k-1 visa yeah. and then completed that k-1 visa process and now Viv has come to the U.S. now six months yeah it's been six, <laughs> six amazing Yay! months mm -hmm. So, how has it been for you? Oh, it's, uh, well, I must... Culture shock. Culture shock, yeah. You okay, know. go, make you president. Um, when I first came, I was quite new to the place, and there was just a lot going mm -hmm. on. And mm -hmm. yeah, talk about culture shock. Um, it's a big difference moving from Africa to mm -hmm. the US. There's a lot. There was a lot of things that I needed to adjust to and learn, and things that I'm still learning up to now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's been super amazing. I mean, you can never be prepared enough, but mm -hmm. you know, you get used to things slowly by slowly, and yeah, I I love it this this way so far. But what was that difference that you noticed? Um, as soon as you stepped off the airport or mm. the first day in the US, how how was it different or what did you experience that was a little bit different? Um, well, I guess being totally new, I didn't know how to do, you know, go about things uh, by myself. So um, it was not quite something that I felt like I was free doing things on my own and the weather. I came around fall and you know That's yeah cold. and then the coldness came in and yeah i'd never like experienced that kind of weather yeah and then the food i had to like start getting used to uh, food this side it's quite different i'm a <laughs> big fan of local food in uganda yeah so food really okay yeah. and then back to same so for you um had you been to Africa before, like before you went for the peace call, had you been to Africa? No, that was the first touchdown was that visit to Uganda and Okay. Yeah. So how how was the first few days landing in Africa for the very first time? Mm -hmm. And also what you had been told before, because there's always stereotypes and there's always mm -hmm. things that you know and hear. Same mm -hmm. for me, you know, same for everybody when you travel. You read on Google, you see things on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So how was it for you when you landed in Uganda for the very first time and the first few weeks or months, how was it for you? Shocking. <laughs> it's all very shocking. All <laughs> oh, very shocking. Uh -huh. From yeah. things you imagine, and I said this before in our last 
mm -hmm. in the last with, interview, yeah. I only imagine Africa with these plains and huts for there. But it's <laughs> shocking going into Entebbe and Kampala mm -hmm. and seeing all this traffic and the big buildings. Mm -hmm. and so yeah, it's very shocking. And then you take new food in, you hear new sounds, you see new things. and More the borders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The chaos oh in the city God, and yeah. stuff like that. Very beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. would you oh say, since this we're just summarizing, well. Luna, since we're just summarizing most of our experiences, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say, yeah. how did that change your perspective on life? Traveling across mm -hmm. the ocean and working mm -hmm. for a few hours mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. staying over there. Did that have an impact mm. on how you mm. see life now? Mm. Yeah, you just, since things are so different, you learn uh, different ways that things can work and the different foods people eat and just how people live differently. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess America, you can kind of think this is the only way that things are done. Mm -hmm. And then you see the way mm -hmm. other people live and it's new exciting there's new things you learn from mm -hmm. that perspective and sometimes you start to view your home country differently mm -hmm. um like for me mm -hmm. i i liked america a bit more after being in uganda mm -hmm. felt like i could appreciate my life here more mm -hmm. and um but Uganda has a different free way of li living, mm -hmm. freestyle, yeah. so Style. the way they live no over there. Yeah. No stress. No stress. <laughs> yeah, everybody stress. laid yeah. back yeah. and it's kind of really interesting. Yeah, so um, Vivian, mm. like when you came here comparing the two, um, what would you, like what have you learned with just living in a different country because at least for me i have learned a few things living here and also living back home it kind of changes the way you look at things in a way and you don't even think about it but when you start um interacting with people they can tell that there's a bit of a difference and for me i'll say it has taught me to like be patient and I've learned to be really mm. really independent and when I say really really independent I was not independent so much before because in Uganda you're like when I wake up and I, I have a few shillings in my pocket I'll go you to saloon and they'll braid my hair Very go right back home this. they can go to saloon do these things yeah. if I need to do something I'll call the plumber they'll come fix uh -huh. my house mm -hmm. if you know I need to paint my house so I'm gonna call the painter that's not how it is here most of the time if you're not hands-on then you better have the cash yeah mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. sometimes you're in between right yeah. so you get to learn how to live life being really really dependent dependent on you yourself, and yeah. that has taught me so much i've been on youtube and googling how to do things and i'm able to do that i'm like phones yeah. <laughs> you can actually do this true, true. starting from simple things like braiding my own hair taking care of it doing luna's true. hair Mm -hmm. making a few recipes um figuring out how to do things yeah so i think mm -hmm. to me that is a big ch a big step that i've taken to mm -hmm. um appreciate that i can do more mm -hmm. and you have the potential to actually do it you have the potential to learn and i think we lack that also in our education mm -hmm. system back home in uganda you're pumped with so much theory but there's not much practical skills we have mm -hmm which has affected us so much because imagine if i was a tailor mm -hmm. and i'm oh able God, to do something like a so shirt i would love to do that but i don't have the skills because everybody looks at that as not a very good way to leave they're like oh True. you're going to drop out of school to go and do tailoring mm -hmm. and you're going to succeed or you're going to be the videography that's not True. i think True. everybody's training you to go oh, and get bad. these white collar jobs go to the bank um go sit in office oh, which i mean is good but i mean if you look at all these rich guys here do they all some of them dropped out of school right yeah. so that's the thing i think for me i would advocate for if we are raising children let them explore their talents mm. and if you want to be a footballer or you have a daughter that wants to go into a hair oh, salon yes, do, let them explore their talents and on top of the degree on top of the masters 
uh, whatever we have mm. you have your own um hands-on something that you can do true, true. Mm. yeah i agree with you um 100 on that because um uh, so many people move from different african countries to the u.s and then uh they face the same challenges mm -hmm. you know back home we have many people who are like you can literally walk the tailor have your dress mm -hmm. made yeah and you can literally it's very I flexible think because it's very affordable also. very affordable but you're not going to find many tailors around mm -hmm. here so if i wanted to give advice to someone who was moving from mm -hmm. uganda to the u.s or any other african country i would tell them to i would encourage them to learn skills mm -hmm. hand on skills mm -hmm. um, those simple things that mm -hmm. you can literally do on your own because yeah. they become a money-making you know yeah. Venture when venture. You're here. yeah um talking of that we were talking about jalia wilder mm -hmm. you can look her up if you're watching True. and you want to actually get an actual example of what oh, we we're talking about exactly. jalia walder is a youtuber she um came from uganda i think i believe 2017 2018 mm -hmm. but she has achieved so much in a short mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. from her thinking outside the box because she has she had two kids and she's thinking what can i do mm -hmm. i cannot go to work and live with two children so what can i do mm -hmm. in this small apartment that True. i have so she sat down, drew down a plan, and guess what? She's now making millions, millions of, money. of money. So all she did was create a platform and teach people how to do makeup. That's how she began. Exactly. Teach people how to do makeup, teach people yeah. how to wear wigs and extensions. And these are the things that we do as um it doesn't you don't have to be an African mm. to need to know that exactly. everyone in the world is doing makeup these days. Exactly. So just and that was her passion. That's mm. what she knew she would do. Mm. And it gave her something and now she has a big platform she's uh, mentoring people she's motivating people yeah. and yeah so pretty much if you know if you travel it shouldn't all, always be the negative maybe uh what you've the challenges you have faced should give you like a push like you know, yeah you, a lesson yes, to yes. do better so i believe imagine if we all did that i think it would be living better yeah, and true. just and and sometimes that people. moving can give you the perspective you need to start a business That's or right. start something or reach different audiences yeah and i remember when we had the first chat with you we, we said i was asking no somebody reached out on the live stream mm -hmm. luna be a little bit quiet i remember i asked you how people can preserve was it passion fruit or mangoes mm. and then because you have seen how people preserve the fruits here mm -hmm. you said people could actually um i forget what you said i think you said if you have enough of these vegetables mm -hmm. how about you make the juice out of it like don't mm -hmm. just throw it away yeah. which i've seen people do people just throw it away oh those are rotten so we're gonna throw them mm -hmm. no make the juice out of it then preserve it and sell it as a juice since it didn't sell as a fruit True. Mm -hmm. so these are things that when you have a business you don't actually think about since you haven't actually seen it yeah. but when you travel and you see how right. people do things i think you learn something yeah. new and you put mm -hmm. the two together and you sit down you're like okay i have the internet yeah. i'm already paying for it yeah whatever so why can't I sit down and make a video like this and people will learn from my experience how to go about things, immigration, whatever, whatever niche you're in. And it's a good platform. Many people don't understand why we make such videos. But if it wasn't because somebody sat there and talked about how they moved to a country and how they adjusted, I think many people would fall into depression thinking they are the only people going through that. But if I'm going to sit down and say, oh, Vivian made it. She can now plate her own hair. She did her own hair. Yeah, she wouldn't have done this if she was in Uganda, would you? So you're like, oh, I can't do this. So anyways, today we just wanted to catch up and uh, I have my visitors here. So we're not going to waste most of our time. But go ahead, check them out. I'll link the um their channel in the description. Check them out. Leave us a comment and let us know how you guys yeah. are doing. Luna, I want to say goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, so bye. we'll see you in bye. the next bye. video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And subscribe and check button.
<laughs> <laughs> Goodbye.